Hey everybody, it's Jason here from the Meta Movie. So in the past, I've made a lot of videos that are kind of promotional in nature. I'll share information about what we've got working in the Meta Movie, um, and I'll edit those up with, with music, and they'll be kind of short little bite-sized pieces. Um, but today I'm working on something, and I thought, you know what, this would make actually a better long-form video. Um, so for anybody who wants to get like a behind-the-scenes look at um, what are we doing in the Meta Movie, how are we working, um, what types of processes and workflows are we using? Um, what does it mean to be an experimental project? Uh, what types of experiments do we do? Um, I thought this video could kind of answer some of those questions. So for anybody who's curious about, um, you know, working in live, immersive uh, VR storytelling like Alien Rescue does with all this kind of hero agency, um, what is it like to be working on the Neos VR platform inside the Fruks engine where we do all this kind of real-time building inside the game engine? Uh, for those of you who are interested in that kind of stuff, this is a good video for you. It's going to be probably about an hour. Um, I'm not going to do any type of crazy editing. I'm just going to um, follow my process as I'm working here. Um, and, and hopefully uh, some of you will, will get something out of this. Um, so. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to be doing editing. I'm using the NEOS VR camera right now, um, and it's a really a nice camera that has a bunch of different options, um, similar to the VR chat camera, I think. I'm in third person. Sometimes I'm going to switch over to my POV, so you'll see what I'm seeing, and I can just do that with a quick button click. Um, other times, I'll go into like a, a manual camera mode where I can just place the camera uh, like on a tripod, and I can like walk away from it or, or, or walk it back up close to it. Um, and then sometimes I'll rotate the camera around so it's like behind my back like this so you can kind of see what I'm seeing but not in um, in like POV mode okay um, so today what I'm working on is I've got this experiment around vehicular locomotion um, I love car chases and um, you know action scenes in movies um, you know I've watched Mad Max Fury Road more times than I should probably admit and I've always thought about how might we integrate something like vehicular motion in a, like a car chase or a plane or a helicopter or a spaceship? Um, how might we integrate that into something like a meta movie? Um, because on the one hand, it's gonna add this whole new layer of kind of cinematic immersion and fun, right? Like imagine getting into a car and driving around and, and having stuff happen. That's gonna feel really immersive and, um, and, and really cool. But we all know that um, vehicular motion can definitely cause VR motion sickness. Um, and there's a good amount of audiences who are just not gonna want that. It's gonna be too intense for them. Um, so there's a couple of different questions I have. Um, you know, first of all, how do you um, how do you make sure that those who want it can do it and really have fun with it? I mean, you have to kind of teach somebody how to drive. Uh, do you do that during the, the actual experience? Or you do it beforehand. Um, how do you even help users know what their tolerance is? Maybe you think you're tolerant and then you're not. You get into it and you're like, oh, I don't feel so good. Um, and then what do you do with the audiences who know they don't want to get in that car or get in that helicopter or something? Um, that's fine. We don't want anybody getting sick, but then how do we keep those people entertained while we're also simultaneously trying to inter, um, trying to engage audiences on this other level? So there's a lot of, of complex stuff to, to kind of think through. Um, and so what I'm going to do for the next couple of shows of Alien Rescue, next couple of our experimental shows, is I'm going to work on something that I call the Mad Max Fury Road car chase and shootout on Palmetto. Um, so we're on the planet Palmetto right now. Um, and uh, if, you, if you know this project, um, uh, you'll know that this is the spot where we um, meet up with the Lucci for the first time. Our heroes spawn into this world. Um, and they uh, they kind of they, they walk down here to about where I'm standing. They meet the Lucci. Uh, there's some role play and introductions that happen. Um, there's a, a mission briefing. We we learn about what we're doing here, and then we all go inside. Um, conveniently, though, this planet has uh, you know a nice big flat surface, and it's really the only place that I could think of to do any type of uh, car chase kind of a thing, because the rest of the show is is either in Kelosite or or back on the Blackhawk. So, even though doing a uh, a car chase and shootout in the early stages of our story, um, it's not you know the ideal place that I would write this type of scene into, um, but you know, as an experimental kind of piece, 
this does give us the option and the space to do it. So um, even though it might not be perfect storytelling, uh, I'm going to do my best to, to make it seem logical and cool and fun. And importantly, we'll learn a lot about um, how, to, how to work with vehicles and stuff. Um, so the plan here today uh, is to actually um, do a couple of things. I want to build a, um, a ramp for a jump. Basically, um, the way the scene is going to start is our heroes respawn in. We've got a show coming up with five heroes. So I know of those five heroes, some will want to be in a car and some won't. Um, those five heroes will spawn in and nobody will be here. The, the Lucci will be gone. The area around this fire pit here will be will be empty and uh, they'll just kind of start wandering through uh, to the building like, like heroes always do. Um, and then what I wanna have happen is over here, now it's, it's actually really dark in here. So let me, um, let me spawn out a, uh, a light. So I'm gonna be working with all kinds of tools here in Neos today. Um, this is a, a light tip tool. Um, you can't see my laser, but uh, because I have them turned off um, for, um, for my use in, in Alien Rescue, I don't want people to see my, my lasers that come out of my hand, but I have a laser and if I aim it and I grab, I can grab this little light tip. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, let me try to zoom in here a little bit. Okay, so this little guy right here is a, uh, a light tip. And if I have it and I just pull my trigger and pull my arm back, I can, I can make a light. And it's just gonna make things a little bit easier for you guys to see. So I'm just gonna make this light here. Um, let me just reset this for a sec. And I'm just gonna put it up in the sky so there's uh, a little bit more light around here. Um, and so what I wanna show you is over here, let me grab this light and bring it down and uh, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to duplicate it, so I'm going to put it over there. Okay, over there is a big rock. Let's just walk over there. It's a nice big rock. And I'm going to build a, um, a ramp onto that rock. And as our heroes enter the scene and start walking towards the Calisite building, they're going to all of a sudden hear the roar of uh, two doom buggies. And we're going to have um, the Lucci um, with uh, cello driving and Baxter in the passenger seat um, and or Baxter probably be in the machine gunner seat because this car has a uh, machine gun seat. And then uh, Z will be in the passenger seat and they will be chased by a car full of qual soldiers. Um, and it'll be just like a kind of a classic Mad Max Fury Road style. Everybody's shooting at each other with their laser guns. And the first thing the heroes are going to see is... Um, uh, these two cars flying off this rock um, and flying through the air. Um, and then it should be a really spectacular cinematic kind of a moment. Um, and then after they land, I'm going to choreograph a, a fairly complex uh, chase sequence where the cars are chasing around and we're going to stop for a moment and we're going to let the heroes jump in a car and the heroes are going to take off and we're going to have these cars kind of, you know, chasing each other and, and firing at each other. Um, it'll be, you know, a big, fun, chaotic uh, kind of an action piece. And then uh, once that action piece is over, we'll segue back into the traditional scene that we do here and then we'll just segue back into um, the rest of Alien Rescue. And this will give me an opportunity uh, to test out a ton of theories and ideas and get a a lot of feedback from our heroes. Um, so I'm going to do a couple things here today. I'm going to build this ramp over here, uh, and, and I'll let you see kind of how I'm going to go about doing it. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of different lighting on the planet because um, the, the natural lighting of this planet is quite dark. Not easy to see all the cars everywhere uh, when it's this dark. So I'm going to brighten up the planet a little bit. Um, this will also give some more light for our video broadcast crew who are going to um, work with us as well. So they, they, they need to know where the cars are and be able to see it. Um, and, uh, and then I'm going to pre-plan a little bit for a rehearsal that we have. So this Saturday, in just a couple days, um, I'm bringing the cast and crew in here to rehearse. And I'm going to show them my ideas for the car chase. I'm going to point out the paths that I want them all to take. Um, I'm going to answer all their questions and, and kind of brainstorm with them. And hopefully in about three hours or so, I'll be able to get the cast and crew up to, up and running on, on what this wants to be. It's, it's not quite enough time to rehearse this, um, but our process is... Um, uh, is very iterative. So we'll rehearse and then we'll just try it out in this experiment and probably a bunch of things will go wrong, but that's normal. We'll learn from that and then we'll uh, maybe rehearse another time or then just do another experimental show. Um, so I don't need it to be perfect. I just need to learn and, and, and ask questions and get feedback. So 
Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go over here and um, and look at this rock. And I'm going to go ahead and scale up. Um, one of the great things about working in Neos is that you can very quickly and very easily um, resize yourself to um, to whatever size you want. So now, you know, I'm basically like, you know, kind of giant size. Um, if I walk over here um, to the uh, Calosite building, uh, you can see that, you know, now I'm like, I'm this, you know, this is the entrance down here where everybody walks in. So I'm, I'm, I'm really quite large. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to kind of see things um, in, a, in, a, in a very big and broad way. I can really get the lay of the land. Um, and being up at this height is great for any time I'm doing uh, a rehearsal with a lot of choreography or a lot of actors and they're all doing a bunch of things. I do actually like being up here with the actors way down on the ground. Uh, they can hear me just fine and I can see them, but I can see kind of the big picture. So for uh, for a lot of the, the highly intense choreography of Alien Rescue, um, I find being up here at the scale is, um, is really, really handy. Okay, uh, and I just need to spawn out um, a, a few other things here. Um, Let's see, uh, what do I need first? First, I'm gonna grab uh, a couple of hero avatars um, like this. Oops, this is too big. Uh, it spawned out big because I'm so big. So I'm gonna reset my scale and I'm gonna spawn out um, a couple of these hero avatars. Um, uh, I need these just for scale so I can get a sense of um, what this scene is gonna look like uh, for uh, for different heroes. So I'm going to put one hero uh, over there by um, the rock because I want to get a sense of of uh, the ramp and the rock uh, from the hero's perspective. And I'm going to put a couple of heroes uh, over here, uh, you know, as if they were walking towards the um, the fire pit, which is kind of like our base camp uh, on Palnetter. Um, this will just give me a sense of... Uh, uh, of overall scale as I start to build out this jump. I want to see how far the cars are going, if I'm going to land on anybody, um, etc. So I've got those heroes and I'm also, so I'm going to come over to this rock. I'm just going to get a little bit bigger. Um, the idea here is that I'm going to build, um, I'm going to build a ramp like next to this rock for the cars to, um, to kind of just go up like this and make this big spectacular jump. And then I'm gonna decorate it so it looks like a rock and not a ramp, hopefully. Um, and I did start working on this um, yesterday. I was just testing some ideas out yesterday and I just took a quick snapshot of, um, of my work from yesterday using the Neos camera. Um, and I can just uh, easily spawn that in. I can, I can kind of scale it up here um, and you can see that yesterday I, I made this kind of simple ramp and I kind of made it the same color as the rock. Uh, and then I was playing around with some other shapes. I don't really like that so much, but I am gonna, I'm gonna stick this reference picture up here uh, just so that as I'm uh, doing it for real today, I, I have a reference of, of what I did yesterday. Um, and so let me also spawn out um, the dune buggies real quick. I'm gonna go back to my normal scale. Uh, so here's the dune buggy that we're gonna use. Okay, uh, go POV. Yeah, so this is a great little um, kind of a sci-fi dune buggy uh, that somebody uh, let me use here in Neos. Um, and it's got, um, it's got a couple different things. You can uh, drive it here by sitting in the seat and using the steering wheel, or you can use your joystick. Um, and the controls are really, really simple. Uh, you just use trigger for accelerate and the left trigger for brake. And there's a couple other things, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then um, if you just, look kind of over here in the back uh, right here if I walk in if I if I trigger something in here I'll get into a um, into the gunner position and I've given this cool um, kind of sci-fi machine gun that um, that kind of fires and then over here there is a, a passenger seat right here um, so there's you know three people can be in this car at once um, and it's nice and big I mean you know I'm I'm at my normal scale right now and you can see it's it's a, it's a pretty big car um, and like I said we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a couple of these I'll have one uh, over here at um, uh, base camp, at least one or maybe even two, depending on um, what our, our heroes uh, say they want to do, um, depending on how many people want to get in the car. Uh, and then we'll also have 
uh, a couple of these. Let me just duplicate this real quick. So I can just easily, any object that I grab, and again, it looks like these things are flying around, but I'm actually grabbing them with my lasers and, and you just can't see them. Um, but, uh, but any of these things that I grab, I can also just quickly duplicate. You can see my, my menu there, just duplicate that. And so now I've got these two cars um, and I'm pretty sure that they're gonna kind of start uh, over there. So I'm just gonna put these over here. They're gonna let's kind of start here. And the idea is that um, when the, uh, the heroes spawn out into Paul Netter, um, they are gonna uh, you know, kind of go from, from here to here. And as they do it, uh, these cars um, over here will uh, zoom out up this ramp uh, and make this kind of very spectacular entrance, and then we'll um, we'll take it from there. All right, so I also am going to spawn out this um, ramp. Um, I got this ramp from uh, another map in Alien Rescue. It's right here, um, and it's it's way too big at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to shrink it down to something a little bit more manageable. Um, you can see it's just a—it's actually just a rectangle, <laughs> really, uh, with some with some uh, guidelines on it. But if I stick this ramp over here, um, and I just manipulate it a little bit, uh, I can I can give us a cool little jump for our um, for our cars to jump off of. So I'm just gonna um, get myself a little bit bigger. I'm gonna just do something like this. I think I'm just gonna. Now the key here is finding this angle because what we want, we need to get this thing down on the ground so it's like that. So now you can see there's kind of a, a smooth transition there from, the, from this ground into the ramp. Um, and if we get the angle correct, um, we'll have enough speed to drive up this thing and then and kind of fly off. And once I, um, once I kind of figure out the right angle um, and get the, the jump working, then I can kind of decorate it and make it look more like a rock. Um, but the first thing that I need to do is make sure that the angle is right so it gives us a good jump. And I'm, uh, I'm just looking at what I, I did yesterday here. Um, and I can see, I'm just kind of estimating like the, the, the slope of that angle. And, uh, and I think I've got it pretty close. I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger. There we go. And I'm just gonna kind of do something like that. Um, good. Now, again, it doesn't look like much now, but I, I, I know what I'm doing here. So um, this is just gonna be the start. So before I get um, decorating on the actual rock and making it look more like a rock formation, um, I wanna first make sure that I've got the angle and the placement of this thing correct. So I think what I'll do is I'll take a, a test jump or two and just drive up it and make sure that I'm getting uh, the right angle to do a real jump and I'm not just like falling off it or something. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'm gonna um, shrink down and we'll go over here uh, to one of these cars and I'll just hop in and we'll go for a ride um, together. Um, I think I will put you guys over my shoulder so you kind of see the world from, from what I'm seeing. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and hop in. And so now I'm in this car, okay? Um, I can drive with the steering wheel here uh, or I can drive with just my joystick and um, I'm just gonna drive with my joystick for now because it's a little bit easier. Um, and if I click on my right trigger, it accelerates, and my left trigger is brake. Uh, and this thing is so much fun to drive, you have no idea. It feels, you know, almost like you're driving a car. Okay, oh, and I've got my other cars over here. Ooh, get out of the way. There's no collider on it. Okay, all right, here we go. Let's take this jump and see how it goes. Uh, that was not bad, but I think I can make it a little bit better. Let me, let me scale up a bit. Let me just tweak this hair and make it maybe just a little bit steeper. There we go. Yeah, I just didn't quite get the lift that I was going for. Um, so let's try it again. The idea here is that I want the car to really, um, uh, really clear that, uh, that space. 
So I'm going to uh, shrink again. I'm going to hop into this car here. Uh, I also realize that the angle can be um, can be improved here. There we go. Okay, that's good. Okay. All right. Drive mode. Here we go. much better. Okay, so notice that we cleared a really a, a pretty good distance here. Um, we landed way over here um, and the kind of the base camp is uh, is right about here. So it was a big, big jump and that's exactly um, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so um, now that we've got that um, that ramp built, I think the next stage is to start working on making it look a little bit more like a rock. Uh, so I'm just going to take a, a, a quick break here and I'll be back in just a second. So stand by. Uh, okay, so yeah, I, I do like that. It's fairly a little bit different from what I had yesterday. It's just a little bit higher. Um, but I think it's pretty good. It's nice and wide. All right, we're just gonna do it one more, one more time because once I commit to this, um, it's gonna be hard to uh, to go back. Um, so I just wanna, um, I just wanna make sure that I've got this down. One more, one more jump. It's really quite good. Okay, so now what we have to do is uh, the goal here is to um, make all this look like it's part of this rock to the best of my ability. And I am, you know, absolutely not a, um, a, a an artist in any way. I, I, my stick figures are terrible, um, but uh, there are some tools here in Neos that should help me turn this into a rock that has a ramp like structure that maybe nobody will really notice. Um, so what I need to do is I need to get some tools out. Um, and the first tool that I'm going to get out, um, I think are the, um, the material tip. Um, so this here really, so all, all the tools in Neos work as these, um, these little pieces of, of, of tool that gets attached to your hand. Um, and it's just so remarkable. So this thing is a material grabber and I can laser this rock. You can't see the laser, but I can laser this rock. I can hit a button and it sucks in the um, material, the texture of that rock into a little orb. And that orb sits inside the tool like this. And now that I've captured that material, whatever I laser with this tool, takes that material. I mean, that's fucking cool. I don't know. I mean, I mean, maybe you have a better workflow than this, but come on, this is pretty awesome. Um, so at least now I've got this ramp that looks, you know, similar to that rock. Um, and I am going to de-equip this for now. Um, so it still looks like a ramp, obviously, um, but now it's starting to match the, the texture of the rock. And it's not going to be this bright in here either. Um, so I do, I can get away with some things. But now I need to build some, some stuff around this. And I found some, some rocks in a folder here um, called rocks. And I found a rock in here that looked pretty good. I don't know if it was this one or not. Um, yeah, that's not bad. Now remember, I can I can change the material of this to make it match perfectly um, this rock here. So um, I can just start to kind of play with this stuff and maybe just build up some some rocks around it. I have a couple different options here, different sizes. So I'm thinking I'll kind of stick one like in here, maybe make it a little bit bigger. I don't want to 
obscure. I need this ramp to be flat, so I can't you know do that. But I can start to get rid of. I want to get rid of all of these you know um, obvious straight lines. Um, so that's looking pretty good. Remember, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll do it right now. You can see. Uh, it's going to look a lot more seamless once I have this. Um, once I use this thing on it, come over here and go bang and bang, and now you can see um, it's not perfect. Again, I'm not a I'm not really a great artist, um, but <laughs> there's going to be a lot going on in the scene. So I I'm cautiously optimistic that I can get away um, with some of this stuff. Um, so let's just see here. Uh, you know, kind of just, just trying to basically like obscure the fact that this is a rectangle. So maybe something like that. Uh, all right. And then, what's the different kinds of these rocks? Smaller than others? I don't, I really am just, uh, I'm just making it up as I go, to be frank. I'm just pulling out these um, these rocks that were, that were given, that were free, um, and seeing if, if any are better than the others, you know? Like, what, what works and what doesn't. Oh, see, now this is a problem. I can't have that. There we go. So I just have to. I need to keep that as um, as clear as possible. Um, and I don't want to use the same shape over and over again, obviously. Um, so I'm just kind of placing stuff as I find them. Uh, I know it's not going to look perfect. Um, and again, it, it is just an experiment. Maybe the whole experiment itself isn't going to work. Um, so I'm not going to get too fussy, and I will be able to go back later on um, and just get rid of all this stuff if I just decide that it was just, you know, it just didn't work, and I, it just ruins the immersion of the scene, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and again, just to kind of uh, see how things are looking as we go, just do that kind of thing. Um, you know, to the naked eye, it looks pretty fake, but uh, I'm gonna keep working on it. So just some more rocks, make them small. This kind of just stick the stuff where we can. Spawn out a bunch of them here. Okay, maybe we'll just have something like that, uh, duplicate it, do that. I mean, there's probably better ways to do this that, that uh, somebody smarter than me would do, but uh, all I'm trying to do is just it's just trying to kind of, you know, like clay, whatever, just kind of build this stuff up. So, and I don't know, maybe maybe this is like easier and better to do in uh, in desktop mode, but shoot, I don't know. I'm just, I'm seeing it all exactly like it's going to be, uh, you know, on, on, the, on the actual day of the show. Um, and it might, I'm not... I might not be very efficient here either, like in terms of, um, you know, how many new materials I'm adding and all that. I, I just don't really know. Um, mm -hmm. But here we go. We're just going to go boom, 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 boom. It's starting to look pretty good. Right? I mean, at a distance. And again, you have to imagine that like it's it's gonna be darker, you know, it's gonna be more like this. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I think we can probably improve on it over here. 
and get some of these rocks out. Um, and just, you know, try to try to make it look a little bit less obvious there. And here. And just try to fill in some of these pieces in here, nice and small. Just kind of just get rid of all those straight edges, right? Over here, maybe. Right in here, and just like lay that like that right i just want to i want to keep this as bump free as possible because if the tires hit like if the tires hit that <laughs> it's going to make the the car go bump and it's going to ruin the um effectiveness of the jump I, I want it to be you know just you come up this thing and you just boom and you're right off of it all right that's looking pretty good actually um so i'm just going to hit this with this thing here okay that is actually looking pretty good i mean it's totally obvious once you're looking for it um but again uh nobody's going to be looking for it now certainly the the you know our audiences are not going to be on the lookout for that at all um and like i said it's going to be significantly darker uh in fact let's do some lighting right now to start to see what the lighting is actually going to look like um so I think I can get rid of that. Um, okay, so just trying to keep track of my assets in here because when I save this map, I need to make sure that um, that I get rid of everything that doesn't belong. So this is the this is the normal lighting for this scene. It's I mean it's supposed to be it was originally written to be in a um, in a sandstorm. Uh, and so we're purposely making this scene uh, pretty dark. And you have to remember, everybody's got flashlights in the scene, so it's, th there is light. Um, but for our, um, so for, for my own two eyes, it's dark, but it's dark in like a moody way. But for our, um, our live stream broadcast crew, Carlos and uh, Projectivity and Digitally Wired and uh, Victor, um, these guys really are always begging for, for more light, and I don't blame them. And it's just a question of, you know, finding a happy medium between what we want the experience to be like um, live for our, uh, you know, paid ticket holders and how visible we want the live stream to be, uh, which is not just for our Twitch viewers, but also, you know, the VOD that we give to our, our audiences afterwards. So it's just a, a balance of trying to find enough light for the video um, and not too much light so it ruins the, the end game. Uh, so, um, so I'm going to pull out my light tip again, and, uh, and this time I'm going to, um, change the color, which you can't really see this UI. Oops, I forgot. When I'm this big, <laughs> the UI for this thing is too small. So I'm going to scale myself back down. Um, I'm going to go into the color picker here, which I, I doubt you can see this color picker. I'm not sure if you can or not. Oh, maybe you can. Uh. And so I'm just going to pick a color that's kind of in the, like the reddish brown area. So the, you know, the illumination of the, of the red and the white will give us some light, but the, the darker hues there will try to match this overall kind of redness. So um, let's see if that's going to do anything for us. So this is our new light off on, off on. Yeah, so what I like about this is that it does illuminate the space, um, but it keeps it in the same overall um, uh, color space that we had before. And I think I'm going to need two of these all together. Scale up. Um, all I'm trying to do now is just give this world a little bit more light um, for the video crew, but not too much light that it ruins the overall um, aesthetic for those of us who are here. So right now, you know, it's a little bit brighter. I know, I know Carlos is going to say, uh, I need more light. Uh, but we, we will just have to kind of figure that out. I think I can give him maybe one more of these. So we've got 
this one here. Um, and then I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to just go over here and just give a little bit light over here. Essentially, we're going to be using all of this area in here for, um, for the car chase. Um, but yeah, I think... I think that's starting to look pretty good. And then if I reset my scale, so now I'm back down at like, um, you know, human scale. And, oops, uh, just let you go behind me here. Uh, here I'm at human scale and I'm in the new lighting conditions. And yeah, I mean, it's clear that like that rock and those rocks feel like they don't belong together. But, you know, this is the this is the level of quality I'm able to do at my budget in Alien Rescue. So obviously it's not, you know, photo real. It's not Half-Life Alex. It's, it's nothing like that. It's very, it's an indie, very indie look. Um, but um, my audiences never complain. They, they say that the, that the world feels incredibly immersive. Um, so, um, so that's good. Okay. So yeah, so that's looking pretty good. And... I think, you know, even if you walk over here and you look at the structure, you know, it's convenient <laughs> that there's a nice ramp there. Um, and certainly if you look at it this way, you can tell like, oh, that's obviously a ramp. Um, but I don't want to turn this into a bumpy thing. I want it to be um, easy. Um, and the next thing I want to do actually is I want to mark this area. So I found these torches. Um, and, you know, I don't know if they're necessarily the aesthetic that I would expect from the qual, um, this flame, um, you know, a, a, an open flame versus like an LED light or something. But uh, this is what I've got for now. And I thought what I would do, and I hope this isn't too like Tiki Torch, um, but I, I really want to make it easy for the actors. And again, uh, I think our heroes are going to be, you know, our heroes and our sidekicks are going to be fairly distracted with all the shenanigans. So I think if I just kind of make that, it's like, yeah, that's where your your jump is going to be, folks. Um, I think the cast will appreciate that. You know? Uh, I think it'll make their lives a little bit easier. Let me go ahead and just get rid of this for now. Just want to kind of clean up after myself so I don't end up um, saving this world with a bunch of stuff in here that doesn't belong. Um, that just makes my life a little bit more difficult. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we've got the ramp looking pretty good. We've got some new lighting and we've got these torches. Let me go hop in here real quick. Um, and let's take a drive. Oops. What's going on? Mm. Let's see here. Mm. Oh, have I turned it off? There we go. So I'm going to stage the actors, like basically, basically here. Um, according to my, according to my calculations, if we are staged here, um, if we're staged here, the spawn point is, is right over there. And when you spawn out this rock down here, this rock down here, right here, obscures your sight line to this car here. So if I have both of the cars, is that over there? Did I move something? That part of the car? Oh, that's the camera. Um, uh, if I move, if I put these two cars here, I'm pretty sure um, the heroes won't be able to see me. In fact, let me try that right now. I'm going to go, um, oh shoot, do I want to do that? <sighs> I guess I don't. Do I want to hit the active map on this button? Well, I could go back and do it over there. Okay. Um, 
No, I, I know. I know they can't see it. I, I know from, from, from the past that they can't see it, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, um, let's go back down, and let's hop in. Right. <laughs> so now, do I see those? Yeah, so I see them. So be helpful. It's pretty good. It's it's a steep jump, and I'm doing like a little double hiccup on it. I can tell, um, but I think it's still pretty good. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll make a we'll do one more test real quick, uh, where we put the camera. I'm going to set up a manual camera here, so I can really test this. Um, let me make this bigger for myself. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to set up a camera here i put it in manual mode so now what that means is that the camera is just stuck over there and i can i can just you know i can go wherever i want and the the camera will see me and it's aimed uh the idea here is that it's aimed at the jump so i can get a sense of um what the jump looks like and what i'm going to do is just um put that car over there for a minute uh, I'm going to hop in here, um, and basically I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump off this jump, and then I'm going to um, watch the recording. I can kind of watch it live, too, if, I'm, if I've got one eye out on the camera. Um, but the recording will show me um, you know, what, the, what the jump actually looks like. So you can't see me now because I'm behind that rock, but pretty soon I'll be coming up over the jump, and you'll see the car go in the air. Okay, oops. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good, man. It's doing a little a hiccup on the jump, um, but that's just the nature of the um at the steepness of the angle. It just the, the suspension on the on the Jeep just kind of bounces a little bit and uh, and does a little hiccup, but I think that's okay. Okay, so um yeah, so I need to make these lights um, invisible, which is easy. I can do that in a second. Um, I don't think I need really any more of these torches. Um, what I am going to do uh, is I'm going to um, I'm going to stop this recording for a moment so I can watch that jump again, and then I'll um, I'll come back. So stand by. Okay, so now we're back in here. I, um, I just saved all the progress that I was working on and um, restarted and made sure the servers were all sunk up. So now I'm, uh, I'm on the finished Palnetter. The lighting is definitely brighter. Um, that will help with the driving so that you can see more of the driving and it'll help with the video crew. And if I think it's too bright, I can always um, turn it down. Over here is our finished uh, rock ramp. And I think it looks pretty good. I mean, you can, you know, if I if I point out to you that they're two different things, you can kind of tell. But I, I don't think anybody's going to notice. And then um, as we come over here, it doesn't look like a ramp at all. Um, and then when we get over here, we've got our two torches that are going to help our cast and crew. And then, yeah, I mean, you can see that this is clearly um, a ramp. But um, I think uh, if the if the heroes go up this jump they're going to be having so much fun that they're not going to care. Um, and if they don't go up the jump and they just watch the jump, they're not really going to notice. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and just uh, for one more time, we'll go ahead and, um, and take that Jeep out. And we'll set up our camera over here again uh, just for one final check. Um, and then we'll know that things are, are working as they're supposed to. So, so yeah, so I just want to always get a sense of like how far this jump is going to take us. So there's our, our manual um, camera. And then just to get some scale in here, we're going to just drop down like if a hero happened to be standing there. Um, and I do want to know like, am I going to, am I going to kind of crush a hero. I mean, there's no colliders on the on the avatars, so if a car were to like literally fall on top of a, a person, it would be, uh, you know, a little bit scary. Um, but uh, you know, nothing's gonna happen. So let's jump in. And, uh... I 
also did test that the spawn point, when you get out and spawn, you cannot see over here, which is good, because the staging area Staging area will be right about here. Oh, you guys can't see it. Anyway, um, let's let's take a jump. <laughs> yeah. Great. And I stopped it right there. Okay, this is this is really good. I'm really happy with that. Now, um, so now that I have the ramp set up, uh, what I want to do is um, I want to start thinking about how best to spend our time when we're here together um, uh, over the weekend. So what I need to do is think about the path that these cars are going to take. And I think what I'm going to use uh, are just some drawing tools. So um, a couple of good. Yeah, this is good. Um, yeah, so I can draw with that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give... Um, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to mark a, a green line for uh, Cello's path. Uh, and a red line for the qual path. So what I'm going to have Cello do is he's going to start pretty much here. <clears throat> he's going to start here. And he is going to do this. He's going to go that way. And then he's going to go Up the jump. He's gonna land somewhere here. And then I want him to do this, and this, and this. come around this way. Then I want him to come back this way. And then I want him to go towards our fire pit staging area here. And what that will do is that will give the ability for Z to jump out and rendezvous with our heroes here. I'm sure that by the time they do the jump, that the heroes will have progressed from the spawn point over there naturally towards the building. They always do. So even if they're over here when the jump happens, which is fine because they'll see it really well, um, what I want to have happen is eventually that car to come around and um, I want Z to hop out. I want Z to hop out and uh, and talk with our heroes who just got onto Palnetter um, and, and kind of let them know. And uh, then I think what we're going to try, there's a bunch of different ways that we can run this, um, but I think what it's going to look like is this is going to be the car with Z, Baxter, and Cello. These two cars here will be already parked here for our heroes. Uh, you know, the logic will be that, like, we found a bunch of these cars abandoned um, on Kellosite. Um, it's a little bit of a stretch. Um, but again, this is an experimental show. Um, and at that point, um, we will either have the heroes drive their own cars or we'll put 
cello in driving car one and Baxter in driving car two, and we'll load up the cars with some heroes. We have five heroes this weekend, which is a little bit more than I prefer. Um, and the problem with letting these heroes drive the car, I can pre-train them. I'm not really worried about that. Um, where's the camera? Um, let me just make sure you guys are seeing me. Um, so yeah, I can, um, I'm going to um, first talk to the heroes and find out what their tolerance is for um, VR locomotion and have them kind of self-evaluate um, on error and on the side of caution. And then I'm going to um, train them in the car, like in the lobby or something. Um, and I'll show them how to jump into the car and equip it, um, you know, how to sit in the seat, how to stand in the gunner seat. And there's a little gun that you can operate there. And I'll also show them how to drive it. Now, some VR users take to it in two seconds. They completely get it and they love it, um, especially people who spend a lot of time in, in VR. Other, other people don't. Um, but the problem with letting them drive is, of course, um, we have a lot less control over the scene if they're driving. Um, all we can do is like talk to them and say, please, please stop driving now. Um, so we do lose a lot of control and we don't want the scene to last forever. Um, so my instinct is maybe to get them to just um, ride in the car first uh, for the first show um, and explain to them that we're just trying this stuff out. Um, but really I'm gonna be super flexible. And if they, if they have a strong urge to try to drive, then they should try to drive because it's so much fun. But here, here is some of the problems um, on this map. So here's Calisite over here, right? And we usually just hang out in this area. We, we don't really explore this map. But if you go further on this map, it's actually quite large. And down there, down there, is another whole huge space of this map that you can get there by just jumping off of this cliff here. Um, and see, I'll show you right now. Boom, you can come down here. And actually, we, we, we tested this out the other day. We were driving our cars off that cliff and landing down here in like a Thelma and Louise kind of vibe. Um, and it was, it was really awesome. Um, but once we get down here, things are really complicated because there's no easy way to get back up there. Um, this, I mean, there's there's complicated ways to get back up there, but there's not any easy way to get back up there. So I think probably we will save that spot for um, for another day. Um, and we have the same problem um, on another side of the map. If we go over here, right? So here's our our, our main base camp over here, um, and here is you know our jump over here, and spawn point is like right about here. If you go over here. Um, what's interesting about here is that this was actually the original plan for this map was that, and believe it or not, if you look at this, this is a road that we made years ago when we first built this map. Um, the idea and all these little things right here, those little way markers, those are, those are, um, uh, little, uh, flares that, uh, Aegis and, um, and Rue and, um, uh, Ryuvi and, um, uh, and, and Nexalon all put here years ago because the original concept from the script and from our earliest development days was that the, the heroes were actually going to spawn out here and we were going to make them climb up this cliff using this really fun um, uh, cliff climbing technique that if you go back and look at some of my um, early um, uh, vlog videos about this project, you'll actually see me um, climbing up a, a cliff mountain because the original idea was to give them this climbing experience. But what happened was that when we built this, um, we ended up, it, it ended up being too big. Um, and, you know, it's just how things work in, in the development cycle. Um, and once we got down here, I mean, I'm, I'm still quite big. If I go down to scale, it's here. And if you look up at this cliff, um, you'll see that it's actually really, really, really big um, and would take quite a while um, to get up. And the climbing mechanic is pretty cool, but it's not perfect um, and you can get stuck. And, and actually, that's why we actually made this um, this ramp over here. The idea was that if you didn't want to climb up the mountain, you could just um, walk up this ramp. But what we discovered is that because this world ended up being quite big, um, the time it takes to walk up this ramp and the time that it takes to walk up that, um, uh, the climb up that cliff, it's just, it's, it's much longer than we wanted. So we just ended up um, 
foregoing this idea. It's just, it's all still here and we, we, might, we might use it at some other point. But eventually what we decided to do was just um, nix that idea altogether. So, you know, it's still down there. Um, and we decided to put spawn here and then just, you know, let the action go uh, over to here to, to pick up the pacing on this scene a little bit, which I, I, I'm really glad we did. That was definitely the right decision. Um, but what we now have, um, getting back to this idea of driving, is that we have areas in the map that you, you know, you can drive the car down here very easily. Um, and then once you're down here, you can actually drive it, <laughs> you know, down into here where you are completely stuck. Like this is just, you know, a part of the map that we never anticipated anybody um, ever using. And if you get your car down here, then the only way to get out of it is very immersion breaking where you have to, you know, go back in and use, um, you know, use Neos tools. And we, we never do that. Like in Alien Rescue, um, if you've been through the experience or you, or you know anything about it, um, we, we don't have people interfacing with their, um, with their UI or their tool sets during the experience. That's completely immersion breaking. So, so that's off the table. So my point is here that if we allow the, the heroes to drive these cars, I don't have any barriers set up right now. Um, and I could do that. I could make some invisible colliders and, and just and, and block them off. But I actually have not done colliders on my own before. Um, and, I, and I don't want to ask the dev team to get involved just yet. Um, and it's still pretty early in this uh, experiment. So I think we're going to just stick probably with uh, suggesting that our heroes go in the passenger seats. Uh, that means we have... For two cars, we have two drivers, Chettle and Baxter, and we have room for uh, two passengers in each car. So that's four heroes. Um, and I'm kind of wondering, thinking, almost hoping that the fifth hero, one of those four heroes, might say, eh, I don't know, I might get car sick. And that's fine. Because uh, for any hero who doesn't want to get in the car and for all the iBots who cannot get in the car, there's no way for us to, to, to parent the iBot to the car you know, today. Maybe in the future we could. Um, those folks are all going to have to stay here and not go on the car chase. And, and one of the goals is to find a way to make this whole scene exciting for those who stay here. So uh, Z is going to hop out. And she is going to give directions to the heroes, and we'll know in advance you know, who wants to go where. Um, and then the idea is that these cars, uh, let's imagine that there's two of them. Um, well, maybe we don't have this third one. Uh, so one would be waiting uh, over here at the, at the site that's empty, um, and then one would be um, piloted by, um, by um, Baxter and Cello, and Z's going to jump out, and she's going to stay behind. She's not going to get in the car. Cello will con continue driving this one. Baxter drives this one. Two heroes in that one, two heroes in that one. Now, we've got our third one, which is the Qual over here. The qual are going to have a slightly different path. We are going to start them over here, um, just like we do with the uh, the Lucci and these guys. You know, are, are the good guys. They're going to start here as well, um, and they're going to have a slightly different um, path. Let's see if I can. Uh, change the color on this real quick. So I'm going to make the, and I'm, I'm just testing this out for myself um, so that when we get here on Saturday, I don't waste anybody's time. I've only got everybody for about two, two and a half hours. So I, I can't be thinking of this on the spot. I have to come in here and, and pre-think it all so that when I do this with the cast and crew, and I'll use all these arrows for the cast and crew, and I'll be scaled up like this. Everybody else will be scaled up big, um, but I don't want to be like inventing it on the fly. I want to I just be repeating what I already know. So qual are also going to follow. Okay, it's a traditional, you know, uh, car chase. Qual are also gonna go off the jump. Okay. Qual are also going to land here in pursuit. Qual are also gonna follow this way and this way. They're gonna come and make this turn in pursuit like this. We're going to come around this side like this, but instead of going there, I'm going to have the qual go this way. Why? Because I want to slow down the action at this point. I want to slow down the action so that um, 
so that Z and those folks have a few seconds, you know, a minute or a few seconds um, to have a conversation without being in like a, a firefight with you know guns going in and people screaming and stuff. Um, so um, I'm going to have these guys come out here. I mean, I think my rationale is that, um, you know, we're in a squirrely car chase and you can't always control your cars. I mean, I know for a fact that driving these cars, you know, you can easily um, lose somebody in a chase. It's, it's, it's not easy to always stay with somebody. We, we've done some practices with the cars already. So it's, it's very uh, logical that like, you know, you'd be turning and th you know, your foe would escape basically. So now you, you didn't make that tight turn. So you're coming around here and, you know, we'll take some artistic license and just have them stay on the perimeter basically of all this stuff um, like this perimeter. And then I think this is now the question. Yeah. So I think ideally if I can get the cast to figure this out, I would have them come back this way and they're just going to have to know. And maybe um, because I, I know this map better than, than, than everybody else. Cause I spent much more time here. So for me to say, you need to like go around this rock and come back, like nobody's going to know it that well. And this, you know, everybody has experienced this, 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 uh, planet in the dark before. Um, so I cannot just assume that they're going to be able to just know, uh, immediately where I want them to go and what I want them to do. And again, I don't have that much time, so I have to be really smart about it. Um, but what I might do to make their lives easier is I might do something like this, smaller than that, of course. Um, but if I um, if I take these torches, and again, these are oversized at the moment, but if I take these torches here, right? If I take this torch here and, and this torch here, then what I've done is I've given them another little road sign, like, this is where I want you to come back. And it's easy because you see these two things and it also leads like directly straight, straight down that line is, is Kelosite and is the, um, is the fire. So it's like very, uh, it, it kind of makes sense that you would go this way. Now, by the time they start coming back this way, we're only talking about 15 or 20 seconds here. I mean, I may have them slow down in rehearsal. Um, but by the time the qual start to come back here, uh, a couple of things will have happened. What will have happened is that, um, so you can see here, what will have happened is that these two cars will be gone. They will be off, you know, you know, probably going in this direction. Uh, and this direction, you know, kind of, you know, where are the qual? Let's go find the qual kind of a thing. Um, and then where's my other car? Do I have my other qual car? Right here. Okay. So at that point, um, what things are going to look like is, uh, right. So here's our, here comes our qual car. By that point, we'll have uh, Z and like a hero and a bunch of iBots still here kind of at base camp. This is, this is basically base camp right here. Um, we'll have, uh, you know, some people here at base camp and the, um, the two uh, cars with uh, Baxter and Cello and the heroes will be kind of, you know, driving away and we're not going to try to choreograph this that much it'll be, it'll be kind of impossible um but the qual will come down here and these guys will most likely fire on them and you know the idea is that we're trying to kill this qual um and then i think the only thing that i should really try to choreograph is the qual i should not worry about these two cars here um, i'm just going to worry about the qual uh, because i don't want this car chase to go on forever we basically need the three qual in this car to eventually be shot and killed. Um, and an easy way to do that is to present themselves as a good target for these folks. Cause firing from the cars, uh, you're going to have a lot of gunfight gunfire, but it's going to be pretty hard to hit a target Two moving cars. You know, it's going to be hard to hit. So if we want the best chance of killing these qual, um, and obviously they're actors, they're going to let themselves get killed according to what I tell them to do. Um, 
the best thing for them to do is to present themselves as a nice target um, to to these guys. And so, um, and that's what we'll have them do. And I'll even probably have them like slow down or something uh, as they get as they get closer to the fire. As I get closer to the fire, um, I can have them um, slow down. So they'll definitely take some fire from from these two here for sure. Bang, 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 bang. Um, you know, if the if the driver gets killed, then the car is going to stop and the qual will hop out and we'll end up in a um, just a more of a traditional you know ground based land based firefight here. They can use the car for cover. Um, our hero and, and Z will, will, you know, they don't have a lot of cover over here themselves. Um, I could put another car here that they could use for cover, but now we've got a lot of cars. Um, so uh, either the driver is going to get shot and killed here, and then we'll end up with some qual on their on the ground, um, and we'll just have to see what happens. Um, of course, the qual are going to be told by me, um, you know, fire you know kind of fire over their heads um always tricky to to blend in like the realism of these bad guys trying to kill you which we do want um but uh we want to be thoughtful about how many times we we kill our heroes um and we're in an early scene so it's a it's a little bit of a delicate balance um if these guys do get killed here these cars you know are going to they're going to probably make a big circuit and come back around here. Um, and we'll all be yelling and screaming and Z will be giving orders. So I think it'll be clear once we see that qual car stopped, it'll be clear if the qual car, uh, if the driver does not get killed in here, which I think it's easily 50, 50 chance that they won't get killed. Then I, I want to make it simple for the cast. So they've come over here. They've made this jump. They've made this circuit, big circuit, wide circuit. They've come straight down. Um, then I'm going to see if they can handle doing a, a reverse wide circuit, which would be basically like this. Go this way. Stay to the outside of the area and close to Kelosite. Right? We're going to come going to come this way i think because it's very very narrow over there so basically like come this way and then you know it's pretty crazy when you're driving these cars so it's it's not going to be perfect they might they might go this way or they also could potentially go that way but i'm going to suggest that they try to go this way and then this way, and then right back. We don't need this thing to go on forever, and we want to eventually get everybody back to uh, base camp. So it's not like we're here for you know a, a big long race scene. Uh, we still got an hour and a half worth of meta movie ahead of us. So um, I want to make the scene exciting, but we can't make it go too long. Um, and I also don't want to risk anybody getting motion sick, even my actors, um, which I don't think they will. My actors, I don't think they will. Um, but I even you know a hero might tell us, oh, I don't get sick, and then actually they, they do. So this this should be a nice taste of an action scene uh, with some driving. Now, I'm not going to bother choreographing the these cars over here with um, uh, with Cello and Baxter and the two heroes because. Um, it doesn't really matter where they go. They just have to go looking for the qual and having fun driving around. Plus, who knows? Maybe the heroes are going to say, turn there, turn there. And of course, you know, Baxter and Cello would, would listen to that. Um, furthermore, maybe the heroes are going to be driving and there, there's no way to choreograph that. So I'm going to completely ignore choreography for Baxter and Cello. And I'm only going to focus on what I know I can control, which are the qual. They're my actors. Um, so. Uh, just to recap, and really, you know, I'm explaining this for you guys, but I'm also, this is, you know, my process. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm thinking of this, you know, on the fly as I'm talking to you guys. Um, although I had a pretty good sense of what I wanted it to do, which is this. So we start here. 
both cars are going to come around here and hit this jump. Um, I'm going to time it so that we do this all about a minute after the heroes have, have spawned in. So it's not the very first thing that happens, but it'll happen pretty soon. Then we're both going to take this jump and we're both going to basically land you know, here, right near base camp. And that should be a really spectacular uh, visual for, for the audience to see. Um, then they will both continue around here, around here. It's going to be kind of, you know, feeling chaotic and noisy with the guns shooting. Um, and then when they make this turn, the qual will keep going that way. And uh, Cello will spin his car around this way. And he'll come back to base camp here. Uh, Z will jump out, and depending on how we decide to structure who's driving and who's doing what, Z is definitely going to stay behind. Any heroes that want to stay behind are going to stay behind, and the iBots are going to stay behind. Um, and then um, once that happens, uh, what we're going to see is, you know, the, the qual are meanwhile kind of out there making a long swoop and coming in here. Uh, the drivers will come in. They'll probably try to intercept uh, maybe go right at them, uh, but no matter what, the qual's going to make a, a trip through here to expose themselves to gunfire, and then they'll take this uh, winding route back here, and they'll come back here, and then they'll turn, and they'll come back here. If they come back here the second time and they're still alive, I will tell them, go ahead and just jump out. Um, and finish the firefight here around the um, around the campfire, so that we can finish the scene. And um, I'll tell Cello and Baxter as well. You know, we're we're trying to end this thing here, so get back here as as soon as you can. Um, I will have the 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 qual trying to fire kind of around us and not and not hit us too much. Um, and of course, we'll all be trying to to kill the qual as soon as we can. Um, and then. Um, you know, once that happens, we uh, will kill the qual. We'll have a moment. We'll, you know, reflect on on what just happened and breathe a sigh of relief. Um, depending on if anybody else got shot and respawned, we'll we'll kind of explain the the second skin and how that works. Um, and then, you know, after that crazy moment, we should be able to then just get right back into the scene at hand um, and go through the, all that exposition and, and meeting and, and talking about the mission and all that. Um, uh, so the other, the only other thing that I have going that potentially could happen in this scene, actually, is that um, I have a. Oh, I guess I, I don't have it here. Um, I do have a um, a creature, uh, like a, a monster creature, that potentially could be uh, escaped from Kelosite, and that creature could potentially make an entrance during this scene. Um, in order to uh, occupy Z and the iBots if the scene is going on too long. Um, if we end up with um, the, the cars just going around and around and around and they're having a blast shooting each other, uh, I need something for Z and the other hero and the iBots to, to do. They can't just sit and watch or, or shoot from afar. It's not gonna be that engaging. So potentially we could have a creature emerge. Um, but I don't have that creature uh, rigged or textured uh, or really ready to go. And uh, I, I, I do think that the goal here for this first iteration is to keep it short and sweet. Um, but just so you know, if you happen to see a video at some point and a monster comes out, it's probably because we decided to, um, to extend this. I mean, at one point I thought we would jump off that cliff over there and have a really longer extended car chase. Um, but as I've thought through it all and kind of iterated on it all, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with this scope um, uh, at the moment. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I, you know, I can see now uh, what I'm trying to do in terms of the, um, the overall layout. I know you guys can't see, uh, you know, the stuff as well as I can because it's a little bit dark. But you know, I can see the the lines that I've drawn out. I understand the uh, the geography of this map because of the ability to get up here and, and scale myself really big. Um, this is so so helpful, um, especially with any type of like action piece to just be able to get up here and see it. Um, 
yeah. So I think we're pretty much set. Um, and now that I know, uh, you know, really precisely what I want to do, um, I will be able to get in here um, with the actors and the crew and explain it all pretty much like I've explained it to you right now, um, scaled up and using the lines. And then we'll just, you know, rehearse and iterate and, and communicate and, and all that stuff becomes just pretty much um, standard uh, rehearsal process. So, all right, I think I'm going to end this recording. It's, it's quite long. Um, but uh, I mean, I wish somebody had, had showed me this stuff when I was starting out. So who knows, maybe somebody will watch this and be inspired or it will help their, your, you know, your own personal process. Um, so, all right. Thanks for watching.